Now, on a totally unrelated note, I recently stumbled across this cartoon on YouTube called Has Been Hotel. It's a little short film and it's awesome. Awesome concept, awesome artwork, awesome music. Go check it out, I'll put a link to it below. It might not be for everyone, but it was certainly for me. That right there was the proof that I was into this show before it was officially announced to be picked up for a series. Just wanted to flaunt my bragging rights is all. So yeah, now this first season of this awesome show has wrapped up, so now let's finally talk about this. With spoilers, I'm gonna be talking about the spoilers for the entire season, including the finale. So if you haven't watched all nine episodes of this show, then yeah, you've been warned. I'll explain what I mean by nine in a second. Season one. I'm finally talking about this show. So yeah, like I said, season one of Has Been Hotel just wrapped up on Amazon Prime Video. But as you saw from the intro, it started off as a YouTube pilot a little over four years ago, created by Vivian Medrano. This whole world is her brainchild. She's been like brainstorming this, I guess, since she was in middle school. That is commitment. And actually, she does have another series that is exclusive to YouTube called Hell of a Boss, which I admit I don't watch. Yeah, I know. Some fans are going to be like, wait, you watch Has Been, but not Hell of a Boss? What? Yeah, that's just how I am. I watched the first like couple episodes and I guess I just couldn't get into it. But anyway, okay, so has been hotel. The story takes place, get ready for it, in hell. Yeah, Pentagram City in hell. From that alone, you should know that this animated series, yeah, it's animated, but it is for adults for sure. It's totally rated R, it's violent, it's got swear words everywhere. Don't let the kids watch this. The premise is, due to hell's overpopulation, angels from heaven come down once a year and do an extermination. Like a cleansing, they just kill a bunch of folks. Our main character is Charlie Morningstar, princess of hell. She hates seeing her people slaughtered every year, so she comes up with an idea. She opens up a hotel that rehabilitates sinners. She figures that if sinners can redeem themselves, as good souls and make their way into heaven, that could fix the overpopulation and extermination problem. Unfortunately, we're in hell, so not a lot of people are gonna believe in her cause. But she does have a small crew of people to help, including her girlfriend Vaggie, their first patron Angel Dust, who's a porn star, and they've also got the aid of Alistair, who's also known as the Radio Demon. And so, on with the show. And yeah, in case you couldn't tell, there is so much I just love about Has Been Hotel. First off, it's just so unique. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, yeah, we have adult animation, but it has heart, plus it is a musical. It's got musical numbers, and all the songs are great. I'll get to that when I touch on the music, of course. But yeah, let's touch on the characters, because the characters are really what grab me into the story. First and foremost, Charlie, voiced by Erica Henningsen in the series. She's the kind of character who I would call inspiring, because she constantly believes in the best of everybody. I mean, that resonates with me because I feel the same way. I've always had the same beliefs that she does, that most any soul can be redeemed despite their sins. I so believe that, and I love that about Charlie. Then there's her second in command, her girlfriend Vaggie, voiced by Stephanie Beatriz, which is funny because whenever she sings, I just hear Mirabelle from Encanto. It is like the exact same singing voice, but Vaggie's a little more grounded. I see her kind of as Charlie's rock, you know? She's more down to earth or hell. And I love Charlie and Vaggie as a pair, and how their personalities balance each other out. They're really cute together. And then, of course, I gotta talk about my favorite character in this whole thing, Alistair, voiced by Amir Talai. I love Alistair so much. I mean, he's literally always smiling. In fact, he is kind of like if the Joker were a demon. You never quite have him pegged. You don't know where he's coming from. You don't know what his motives really are. We still don't know even after the finale. He is, as Vaggie describes him in the pilot, a wicked spirit of mystery. He's unpredictable. And yeah, that smile of his just Oh, what a look. Just whenever Alistair appears on screen, I always perk up and I'm like, oh, it's an Alistair scene. What's he up to this time? Angel Dust, voiced by Blake Roman, is, I would say, the last really important character. Because, my God, is his story arc deep. He's the patron who is trying to redeem himself. And, you know, at first he doesn't believe in the cause, but over the course of the season, he does kind of turn. You see his character evolution, and it's really well done. I love it. I mean, really, it was episode four. That's the one everyone was talking about when it aired. You see the abusive relationship he's in with his boss, and you're like, holy shit shit. How can you not feel bad for him? Which is why when Husk steps up with that awesome song Loser Baby, which was my anthem for the next week or so, you're like, yes! friendship and camaraderie and he's there for him and I love it, it's awesome. Episode 4, Masquerade, is truly one of the best episodes of the season. I mean, I don't know if that's saying much because I really just love this season as a whole. I love it all. The animation is awesome too. I love the design of the characters. And again, that all comes from Vivian Medrano. The way these characters look, you kind of assess, you're like, okay, so when you die and go to heaven or hell, your form completely changes into something else entirely. Some of the characters have animal attributes, like Angel Dust is kind of spider-like, Alistair has some deer attributes, 
It's really interesting. I mean, Alistair's design is my favorite of all the characters. With his smile and his pinstripe suit and his mic stand, oh my god, what a vibe. But really, the reason I love this show so much, I touched on it a little bit already, is because of what separates it from most other adult animations for me. Because most other adult animated shows that I've seen are just, they're there for the comedy, like Family Guy or something. Not that I hate Family Guy, I like it. But unlike a lot of those other adult animated shows, has been Hotel has heart and emotional scenes with the characters. And it really grabbed me in the YouTube pilot. I remember the exact scene it did. It's the scene where Charlie is on the phone by herself leaving a voicemail to her mother and she's doubting her own cause. She's like, I don't know if I can do this. Right there, I was like, oh, holy shit, Charlie, I feel bad for you. And it was right then and there that I knew this show was something different. It was a hell horse of a different color. And it is because of its themes of forgiveness and redemption. Again, two things that I really believe in. Accepting that people make mistakes, but that doesn't make them a bad person. Which is funny because in episode 6 we see heaven, we get a meeting with the people of heaven, and we see that some people there are not much better than the people of hell. There are assholes in heaven too, namely Adam, who's voiced by Alex Brightman, which is awesome. That's Beetlejuice. But yeah, Adam, as in the Adam, the first man Adam. And that's one thing about this show is that it jabs at biblical lore. So yeah, I'll say if you're super religious, you might hate the show. But I'm not, and I love it. I love that episode too. Episode 6, Welcome to Heaven. That's another one of my favorites. Because we also meet Emma Emily, who also quickly became one of my favorite characters. And it's funny, at first I was like, that's Kristen Bell's voice, isn't it? She just sounds a lot like Kristen Bell. Turns out it's not, but Shoba Narayan, who does voice her, does a great job. Cause she's adorable and I want to see her more next season. In fact, I'll use that to segue into the problem I do have with this show. And that is the fact that it's too short. The season on Amazon Prime is eight episodes. It's nine if you include the YouTube pilot like you should. And the episodes are just 20 something odd minutes long. A lot of the time I felt like that short amount of time was just not enough to set up this whole world that Vivian Madrano has created. Granted, I know we're not going to get everything in season one. There are definitely some loose ends that were left open on purpose to be explored in later seasons. But even the stories contained within each episode, I felt like they could be stretched out a little bit. I would have watched this season with a big Alistair style smile on my face if it had 40 something minute episodes or twice as many. Like example, Emily as a character. We really only see her in that one episode. And after the season wrapped up, I was like, I want to see her more. And I imagine we will, but I'm just saying. Or another example, the rivalry between Alistair and Vox, which we see in the second episode. Really, it's, it's touched on there and then a little bit in the finale. And that's pretty much it. It's not really explored in detail why they have this rivalry. It is explained and we do discover why, but I just would have liked to have delved into that a little more. That's just me though. But yeah, that is really my only major gripe about this show is that it's too short, which can be twisted into a positive for the show by saying it left me wanting more. So there that is. And of course, one of the show's biggest strengths is its soundtrack. Like I said, the show's a musical and every single song in every single episode is a banger. My favorites, you know a couple of them already. Loser Baby, like I said, was my anthem for a while. Hell's Greatest Dad, which I thank you so much for watching my piano cover of it. I love Electro Swing, that song is awesome. Plus Jeremy Jordan as the voice of Lucifer. Perfect. Although I will say sometimes this applies to most musicals. I don't like it when the songs just come out of nowhere. Like people will be talking and then all of a sudden someone starts singing and we're like, oh, we're in a song now? That kind of threw me off guard. Like the song Respectless, Great song, another one of my favorites. But watching that scene for the first time, it just started out of nowhere. I was like, oh, okay, we're suddenly singing. Yeah, it just seems kind of weird to me when they do that. I always prefer songs to start more organically, you know, letting you know that, hey, we're going into a song now, like Stayed Gone starts. Like you hear the music amping up and it lets you know, it's like, okay, yeah, a song's coming. And then Vox starts singing and I'm ready for it. I just, I prefer it like that. Again, that's just me. And the finale of this season, Holy shit. I mean, we learned pretty early on in the season that angels can be killed. The exterminators and exorcists, whatever they're called, they can be killed, which means hell has a chance of fighting off these exterminations. In these last couple episodes that just premiered, a lot of shit went down. I did take a mental note of the scene where Charlie makes a deal with Alistair, because the deal was Charlie does a favor for Alistair at a moment of his choosing in exchange for the info he knows about the angels. So yeah, I feel like that is going to come back at some point in the future. What is Charlie going to have to eventually do for Alistair? I don't know, but if I'm venturing a guess, it's it's gonna have something to do with the leash he's on, as we find out from Husk in episode 5. Man, that scene. <sighs> but yeah, so we're getting ready for war with Heaven. Baggy gets her wings back, which, yeah, one of the biggest theories that was confirmed in the season was that Vaggy used to be an exterminator for heaven. That was a huge reveal that, yeah, it shocked me. She's a fallen angel who found Charlie and they got together and the rest is history. And Charlie finds that out and she does eventually forgive her, of course, which again is just awesome. But now we are at war with heaven. Sir Pentius makes the sacrifice play, which I was like, Godspeed, soldier. Although he does end up in heaven at the very end. I was like, Oh shit! So there's your proof right there. Damned souls can be redeemed. I figured that out in my head and I was like, 
Oh my god, I can't wait for Charlie to see that. We have a pretty sweet scene where Alistair fights Adam, and Alistair's using all his radio demon powers. Although he does end up getting his ass kicked and his mic stand broken for the first time that we've seen. We've never seen Alistair defeated like this. So I was genuinely in shock. I was like, oh shit, Alistair, no! He's fine, he does retreat. But just seeing Alistair in defeat like that, I, I was not expecting it. I was expecting him to kick Adam's ass. Didn't happen, but... I love the part where he vows revenge, I guess. During the final song, he vows to break the deal that he is in, the leash he's on, I guess. Which, yeah, the biggest theory right now is that it's under Lilith, but I don't know. But yeah, I totally want to see it happen, because I want to see Alistair completely unleashed. More than being a giant deer demon with tentacles. Because something tells me that the reason he couldn't beat Adam was because of this deal he's in. Because otherwise, why would he have brought it up during the final song, you know? That's my train of thought. And then Nifty kills Adam, which I was like, alright, I guess that was going for the laugh, but I am glad that Adam's dead, which sounds kind of odd to say, but it is for the show. Because Adam, oh my god, he was such a douche. Every time he was on screen, I was like, how was this guy allowed into heaven? I mean, seriously. So yeah, glad he's not a problem anymore. And in the aftermath of the war, we see that the hotel is destroyed, but the crew comes back together to rebuild, and it looks like we got some new members joining. Cherry Bomb joins in, and Lucifer joins in. I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot more of them next season, which is great because I love both those characters, and I'm happy they joined the crew. Maybe. I don't know if Cherry actually will, because of, well, who she is, but that'd be cool if she does. And yeah, Alistair is back and he's fine, which is funny, because the V's are like, all right, Alistair's gone again, so we're going to plan a takeover. Yeah, that's probably not going to go well, but I do imagine that we're going to be seeing more of them next season as well, which again is also great, because I love Vox, I love Velvet, Valentino's an asshole, fuck that guy, but Vox and Velvet, I love them, so I definitely want to see more of them. The final scene was so ominous to me, I'm still not sure what to make of it. It's loot, she's back up in heaven, she approaches Lilith, who we are seeing for the first time right here and immediately I was like what is she doing up in heaven and loot is like Adam is dead your deal is done I was like what your little brat is causing trouble down in hell so you gotta fix this problem I was like all right what is happening I still don't really have the faintest idea but yeah all right we're gonna be seeing more of Lilith next season finally because she's been the most mysterious part of this whole story so far seeing as we haven't really met her yet but we've been hearing about her and we saw pictures of her up on Lucifer's walls so what is Lilith's deal I guess we'll find out whenever season two decides to come out. But in the end, for now, has been Hotel Season 1. I love it so much. I love the characters. I love the music. I love the animation and the design of everything. The emotional moments with the characters and their story arcs and their emotional arcs. Yeah, they are what really grabbed me into this story. They are what sucked me into this world from the very beginning and they have not let me go. Yeah, the season is pretty short. I would have liked to have seen it be twice as long or something. But again, that's Vivian Medrano leaving me wanting more. I love the show to death. I'm glad it got picked up. I can't wait to see more. I'm looking forward to season two and however many more seasons the show might bring. Let's hope a lot. I know that it's only February now. There are a lot more seasons of TV coming out this year, but Has Been Hotel Season 1 has a pretty strong chance at making it onto my top five TV seasons of 2024 list, because it's just awesome. Watch it. I'll put a link to the YouTube pilot below, because I'm there for you. So, Has Been Hotel Season 1. Have you watched it all the way through yet? What are your thoughts on it? What's your favorite song so far? And what are your theories and predictions for Season 2? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, Thank you for subscribing. Peace!